Welcome to Lit Happens, Saskatchewan showcase of the literary talent of the province. We have an up and coming rising star in our midst today, and I'd like to welcome to the show Michael Cuthbertson. Hello, Wes. Hi, welcome to the show. It's super to have you here. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Yeah. And uh, yeah. You've got a lot of energy. You and I have been chatting already quite a bit, and uh, I can see you've got a lot going on. Uh, just tell the viewers a little bit about yourself and uh, how you became writer. Well, I, uh, I started by uh, editing at the university paper here, The Sheaf, and right. then I sort of just uh, had so many projects and ideas that I wanted to take on myself that I kind of just started my own publications and my own writing enterprises, uh, the MC Press, my yeah. magazine and zine. Uh, online magazine, and uh, I'm also writing a novel right now, which I'm nearing completion on. And awesome. uh, aside from writing, I mean, I I love music, I love the yeah. environment, um, and that kind of seeps into my writing, especially in the magazine. I cover a lot of music. I like writing about environmental issues. Wow. Uh, so the the premise of your zine. Uh, you cover a lot of the local music scene and local environmental issues. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm, uh, I, I guess the overall premise is uh, it's, it's alternative media. So yeah. I'm hoping to cover things that just would definitely not be covered in mainstream media, either because it was considered too obscure a topic yeah. or I think more commonly it's something that for political reasons or whatever, a, a large corporate influenced uh, news publication wouldn't be comfortable publishing so anything oh. countercultural I'm kind of that's pretty bold to uh, <laughs> throw yourself out there how did that feel when you initially started doing this uh, well it, it was just it was so natural like writing is like I always have I have too many ideas that I yeah. want to write about all the time so it was definitely a case of just I needed a, a forum to be putting my stuff out in and I just thought, um, my older brother back in the 90s had uh, a zine back really? when that was something people were doing. Yeah. And uh, I kind of had the idea that like, well, I really do like print media and I thought that would be a good idea to just do it off my home printer. Yeah. And, uh, and then obviously it is the 21st century, so I decided to put it on the website as well. Sweet. TheMCPress.com. Nice. Yeah. Now, just for the viewers who might not exactly know what zines and zine culture is, maybe just tell us a bit about it. Yeah, well, it's interesting because, like I said, I, I knew about it from my brother. He had a snowboarding zine in the 90s. And, and there was, from the 80s and 90s, there was all kinds of zines, yeah. punk zines. And, and it was a big thing. And then today, I wasn't even really sure when I decided to do it that there was a network of, of zines and zine culture. but. It's mostly like people connect online. I've met a lot of cool zine writers from Canada and America. And today I would say it's mostly, um, it's like there's still the punk thing and there's like yeah. feminist scenes and there's like a lot of social issue type scenes. But uh, there isn't a lot in the way of what I'm doing, which is sort of, a, it's a magazine really. It's just shorter right. and I don't have a printing press to put out a large format magazine. So right. it's a, uh, it's, it's more of a magazine than I guess what a lot of zine culture is today, but I'm also, I have read a lot of great zines and I really yeah. like, am involved in, I love reading other people's zines. Definitely. Absolutely. Uh, now you were mentioning you're working on a novel, in fact you're kind of coming to a fine tuning point with it. Yes, I, uh, I'm hoping to have it done by the end of the summer and uh, it's largely autobiographical. Yeah. I should say it's entirely autobiographical, <laughs> though uh, it's, I guess, fictionalized. Uh, the yeah. characters have names other than myself and so on. And mm -hmm. it's just sort of a, a coming of age story, uh, my first taste of adulthood. Nice. Um, and just uh, a lot about, um, again, nature. A lot of it uh, takes place when I'm living in the wild in BC. I did that a couple of years ago just camping out in the wilderness and uh, so there's I'm also I just finished a philosophy degree so there's philosophical musings that run throughout the novel wow I I'm really intrigued <laughs> yeah I'm excited to have it out I uh, it's kind of been a thing I'm sure you experienced this where you think you're close to being done yeah. it and then uh, you're not quite there I had yeah. someone tell me Writing is like the story of Sisyphus, where the this myth where the guy pushes a boulder up a hill and then it just gets knocked back down and 
he has to do that for all eternity. And sometimes the editing process feels like that. But I'm quite sure that I'm actually close to being done at this point. Nice. Do you have a title? Uh, you know, this is or weird. Is I don't. I don't want to release it yet because yeah. I had a title. And I looked online, and someone else had taken the title. I was going to call it September Girls. There's this oh. like uh, old rock song called that, and it yeah. played into the it played into the book. But I guess uh, when I looked online, someone had taken the exact title at this wow. exact year. So that's weird. But that's I'm just harsh. I've just decided to just keep it, the new title secret till it's done. Cool. Now we're running out of time, but I I can see you're you're young. You have a ton of energy and creativity in you. What, uh, what does the future hold for you? And Well, uh, I guess the plan is, uh, like, I'm very ambitious about wanting to get the book and my magazine out to a large readership, but I, I still really like the idea of, like, self-publishing and, like, putting it out through my own means. Like, I, mm -hmm. I think that's becoming a, a more viable option over time, and I, I think I'll probably do that for a long time, just put out my own work and through opportunities like this, try to let yeah. the public know about it. And self-publishing has become explosive in today's society. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, where in Saskatchewan or Saskatoon can viewers find your zine? Uh, the zine can be found yeah. at both uh, Turning the Tide, great alternative bookstore, wow. and uh, the Vinyl Diner on Broadway, yeah. great record store. Yeah. Um, those are right now the two places you can pick them up. They're free, so uh, yeah, you can definitely get them there. Uh, the, all of the content is online at themcpress.com, and there's even a digital version of the zine, so you can flip through the pages, and it's, it's not paper, it's not material, but right. uh, it gives the magazine feel. Well, and more and more people are reading online. So. Yeah. Exactly. So there you go. Uh, I also happen to know that you are quite active on social media, so people can always approach yes, you. Yes, on you Facebook and other yeah. classic other, yeah. social media. Other classic avenues. social media. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I just want to thank you for coming on today. This was sort of a last minute thing, but a, yeah, it I really worked enjoyed out it beautifully. Yeah. yeah thanks and, a bunch uh, for the opportunity. Oh, you're welcome, and uh, we wish you all the luck with your uh, with your zine and your book. So we're gonna thanks. hopefully get you back on again. Oh, for sure, definitely, I'd be happy to. Awesome. That's all the time we have today for Lit Happens. If you enjoyed today's episode, you can see previous segments on the Shaw TV website or on my website, www.westfunk.ca. And you can connect with us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. So I will see you next time on Lit Happens.